Hello YouTube, 87 Ricer here. So, I am at the Coca-Cola distribution uh, warehouse in Wright City, Missouri. Today is January 18th, 2023. And this warehouse, as far as I know, this one and the one across the street over there as far as I know all they do is uh, dis uh, distribute your like sweet tea your uh, gold peak sweet teas maybe some other stuff that's not soda related but is owned by Coca-Cola so on here got a side of Tams all the way to the back <laughs> this is how close I was and look maybe you'll get a view of the forklift going by as they're loading I'm impressed every time on both sides there's my load box I got four of them In this video, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video, and when I'm done getting unloaded at this one, I have to go across the street to another door and get the rest of the load put on. So it's two different dock doors. So he's probably gonna load me till about maybe give or take right about here. And then the other one will finish me off closer to the doors. And maybe maybe half the warehouse is sweet tea, maybe the other half is sweet tea, or uh, unsweet, or the different color flavors. I don't really know. All I know is every time I've went here, it's always been gold peak sweet tea palettes that I see. So, yeah. Now the good thing about it is I don't have to really keep the reefer running because if they don't want it to freeze, they don't want to, those bottles of imploding or exploding in there. So I don't have to worry about the, uh, I don't have to worry about running the reefer to keep the product cool. Usually it's a dry load, so you don't have to, you know, so it doesn't need to be regulated. But this load is going to go to Alsip, Illinois, to the Coca-Cola Distribution Center in Alsip, Illinois, which is basically Chicago. I'm basically going to Chicago again to make this run, and then I'll get loaded up somewhere, and then I'll come back and end the week back after this, after this trip. But yeah, like I said, Wright City, Missouri, at the Coca-Cola Distribution. One of the one of the buildings here, and this one here, right underneath of that water tower. So, like I said, I'll just kind of do a little. I'll show you the inside whenever he gives me the uh, sign that uh, he, that it's loaded, and I can go to the next spot. Alright, now 
that I am done at this spot. I have to drive across the road and go to the next warehouse to door five. I was in door 25, now I gotta go to door five for them to finish up the rest of the load. But I have to creep along and keep the truck under five mile an hour. Otherwise it's gonna reset my drive time and I have to sit here like for two hours to get a full clock in order to make it back up to Chicago. So right now altogether I've only been sitting 26 minutes but as long as I keep this truck under five mile an hour then I can actually I can actually not trip the time and or I yeah I, I won't trip the time if I keep it under five mile an hour while I go to this next door now a part of me wants to just drive by this guy because I don't know what he's doing but I don't want to be a dick and drive by him if he's just going to pull out. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and go around him. Uh, no. I guess he was waiting for a door. That's what I get for being in a rush. I was going to pull out. Or I was going to pull up. And this guy was just waiting for a door. Well, I'm going to go anyways. I'm not blocking him. I'm not in his way. All I got to do is just go across the road. said so I got to keep this truck under five mile an hour so I'm going to be creeping along here because I don't want to trip the clock because out of the two hour break I'm supposed to have to get enough time and sleeper berth 28 minutes is not enough to give me that time that I need to get to Chicago I need to take a two hour break to get just enough time to get to Chicago but like I said I gotta keep this truck under five mile an hour so I don't trip it up otherwise I gotta restart the whole damn process of waiting two hours to get any kind of time back to make it to Chicago and just so you know where I'm going in Chicago is only 329 miles to where I'm gonna deliver at the next place. And right now my clock sits at four hours and 42 minutes. So that's not anywhere near enough to be able to get me where I need to go. I'm making a big wide turn because I want to set my trailer up to where I can see it from my left side and not my right. Now there's nobody parked in door five, so I'm not going to hit anybody, but I still want to be able to just back straight up 
or at least get the trailer lined up to where I don't, where I can just get it straight in there. Straight, at least enough now that I can back up and get the trailer pretty well in line with line with the door. Uh, just a little bit farther to the left. Yeah, not totally straight, but I can straighten it out before I get there. Let's go see how I fucked it up. This is an easy, easy backup. Let's see how I. St I think I'm a little too far to the right. I mean, to my left. I'll be able to tell. Let's see if I messed it up. Ah, uh, they can get in there. I think. I mean, this is right here. My pat, my bumper is right here. So I mean, I think I did fine. If they can get in there. I have hopes that they can. So I don't think I did bad at all. I mean, yeah, I think I'm good. I'll know when I start feeling this trailer moving around. I'll know that that it, they got in. <laughs> See if I can give you a little uh, ramp action of them putting the ramp into the uh, into the trailer. That ramp there. <laughs> that ramp will lift up and set right in. As long as they can get in there, I believe they can. Yeah, I believe they can. But I don't have a trailer here. That's door six. So, no trailers to worry about hitting. No, tr you know, I had all the room in the world to get the truck and trailer pretty well in line with the door. I don't give myself enough credit. But, 
Yeah. Come on. Start moving that. Start putting that in there. Oh well. I'll just show you the inside of the trailer when they get this one done. Yeah, like I said, this trailer's going to Chicago, Illinois. And uh, I'll sip A L S I P, I'll sip Illinois. Which is cool. Come on. So, in case you all don't know, that means that the door is closed and there's nobody in the trailer. And when the red light comes on, it means that that's it. Means that that is active the doors up and there's somebody in the trailer and when they give you a green light you're good it means there's no activity but they don't always want that at other places like walmart target dollar general they they have a rule that where even though you have a green light you can't just pull out until they call you with your paperwork once you got your paperwork, then you can pull out. But even though it goes from green to red to green, just because you got a green light doesn't mean you can pull out. Now, there, my, like my first year in, I was in, uh, not even a few months into my first year, I was at a St. Louis, I was at a St. Louis uh, distribution center, and I had a red light, or a green light, I backed in the door, and I had a red light, they were active, then I had a green light. But I didn't get any call from anybody saying, your paperwork's ready, come get it. And I sat in my truck, I just sat, 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 waiting on a call. And they never called. So I went and knocked on their door, and they said, oh yeah, we we uh, we uh send the paperwork back to Witty, so you don't have to have the paperwork. And I'm like, well that would have been nice to know, instead of just sitting here waiting for a response I was never going to get. But it didn't piss me off, so it's okay. It's just, it was like, well, it would have been nice to know that. Hmm. Use it to put underneath your trailer. I figured it out. <laughs> yep. Let me move that little thing out and Yeah. I figured out how to work it now. I've had one where it's a pump jack. But yeah. Just a little tidbit about the green lights. Stop signs. Wright City, Missouri. Fellow witty driver. Secure. The handle is locked in place. It's not going anywhere. I don't know if you all can see it, but no, you all won't be able to see it. That kingpin right in between 
that fifth wheel is uh, locked in place because you can see that bar across the king pin. That's the locking mechanism. It's that little uh, that little pin that you pull and it releases that king pin. So it's not going anywhere. That means when you pull forward, that trailer's not coming off the, the fifth wheel. Sounds like they're getting ready. Could be wrong. I thought I heard some noise. Nope, I didn't hear. Maybe it was the other one. Probably that trailer there. thing I'll say about Witty Brothers is they gave me well I came to Witty looking to advance my looking to make some good money and driving a vehicle like that and I went to their school and, they, and I, uh, I studied and uh, I was with a good group of uh, classmates that we were all in it together. We were all learning the same stuff. And Witty Brothers has really, really good training. They have really good training. And I see a lot of bashing on companies like Swift and, and uh, Amazon Prime or just mostly the Swift jokes. You know, because apparently there's a lot of Swift accidents. Well, honestly... It just I guess it just depends on how well you're trained I mean there's times where I still feel like a Swift driver and I've never driven for Swift Woody Brothers is the only company that I've driven for they're the first company and uh, like I said they gave me a chance they took their they trained me and I passed and you know they gave me they uh, they let me drive for them and they trust me with their trucks and their equipment and uh, they don't look at me as a number they know me my name they know me by name they know all of our, the drivers by name they don't treat you like just a number and I've been very blessed that I get home on the weekends that smacking that you just heard lets us know that we can pull out and not have to not have to stay in the door when they're when they're done loading but uh, yeah, I've been very blessed that Witty Brothers gets me back every weekend. And I, I'm, like I said, I'm blessed that I get to be home just about every weekend. Well, actually every weekend since I've started. And it's been, September will be three years driving for Witty. And I've never felt like a number to them. They've always worked with me. So, I'm just blessed. Make good money. Make really good money driving. I'm happy that I, that I get to drive and make money driving. But yeah, that's uh, but yeah, they gave me my shot, and so I've been driving for them. When you want to slide your tandems, you pull this button out, it's this one right here, pull it out. In this railing system you can the trailer moves or this moves even though the, the tandems stay still it slides across that railing system that's how you adjust and normally I used to put it this is a California setting I used to put it in two holes front of California but I was going through Illinois one day 
and I got pulled over and I had to slide them back. So now I leave a, now I leave my tri not my tandems three spots. Mostly these two. Sometimes I leave it right in California, but it's mostly I leave the tandems within these two spots or that one. I don't really go any farther back. So yeah. When I got time, I just go look over the truck in the trailer. Kind of like well, we call it pre-trips. You always check your stuff before you go on a on a drive. And before I go on a drive, if I got time, I just kind of walk around the truck and the trailer and I make sure that things are looking up to up to par. So, yeah, I just check things out. Check the tires, make sure they're good. This is that hook that I explained in one of my videos. When I was riding around, I said how this hook was bent flush up against the trailer because I smashed the I smashed the side and it was exactly this side this hook here was bent up against the trailer so when I went to go hook this piece onto here to keep the door from flapping I realized that I ran into a pole and you could see a nice little ripple effect and one of these lights was busted off and I realized, oh, I just, I hit something. All right, I drug across it and it bent that in. And I explained that, I explained that story when I was riding my moped in one of my previous videos here lately. So, uh, like I said, when they get done unloading me, or when they get done loading me, I'll show you a quick inside just kind of give you a view of what I'm looking at and I've noticed that liquid liquid beverages tend to weigh more than uh, regular items like food just yeah basically I've, I've learned that liquids weigh more and so the trailer is heavier because of all the liquid I hear some action in the trailer They're in. That's what matters. They got in there. So now they're in the process of loading this trailer. And here in a little bit, they'll let me know that uh, I can move the truck when they beat on the side to let me know I'm good to go. And then I'll put the load locks in. I'll lock them in place. Keep the pallets from shifting. And then I'll be I'll be good to go and head towards Chicago, Illinois. So when they're done, I'll show you the inside. All right. Just a little bit of what I, Gold Peak. There's my load box. No blocks. All right. All right. So, I slid the tandems. I'm 
pull this button. Right, I'm push it back in. So I pushed it in. Now when I pull forward, this there's a little nub right here. I'm gonna pull forward, it's gonna go to that hole. Felt it. I felt it go because it won't let the truck move because it's locked in place. There you go. That's my setting for this drive. Maybe I should go one back right there, but I'm not going to. So that's it. Off to Chicago. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified about all my crazy ass videos, hit that bell notification and you'll be notified about all my crazy ass videos in the future. 87 Ricer, out. Peace.